Okay, so we have the uh, I1 Extreme here. I've got the props off. We're going to do a, a bind and a setup on the Devo 10 with Deviation 4.0 software. So I've got the cable uh, that comes with the Extreme uh, plugged into the uh, proper connections. The, uh, the black is the uh, ground, the red is the power, and the white is the signal cable. Now I've got this run um, in the frame there uh, so that it doesn't uh, interfere with the uh, canopy going on and off. And then it runs through there, and then it comes out uh, at the front here. And it will get mounted down in in behind the front LED here. And you can see already I've, I've installed the um, piece of uh, rubber tubing, just uh, basic aquarium air tubing over the wires there to ensure there's no shorts and we'll also be uh, covering the, uh, the, uh, the lemon uh, PPM uh, receiver as well. I'm going to bind this to the Devo 10 with a deviation 4.0 and then we're going to go through the learning uh, process. Okay, so we'll install the bind plug in the receiver, lemon receiver. And we'll just pull that up so that it's uh, kind of visible. Okay, so we're going to Plug in the battery. We're going to press the real safe button. And we're not getting the blind, so we're going to go down and force the bind on the transmitter under the model setup. Solid red light on the receiver. Uh, telling me that it's now bound. So now it's in learning mode automatically. If you already have pre-bound your receiver, then you would push the um, then you would push the uh, line button uh, down here beside the battery connector. But this one is now ready to go. So we'll go into the learning mode. First thing we're going to learn is channel one. And to do that, we're going to move the throttle to the top and then to the bottom. And now you can see we've got a double flash going on. So we're going to learn channel 2, which is to move the rudder to the left and back to center. Now we've got one, two, three flashes. Learn channel 3, we're going to move the elevator to the top and back to center and four flashes. Now we're going to move the aileron to the left and back to center. Two, three, four, five flashes. So channel five is uh, the F mode switch the way I'm set up. So I'm going to go to, from position zero to one to two and back through the sequence. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ready for channel six. Channel six is my mix switch. I'm going to go through the zero, one, two, one, zero. And 
Now I have a green. First thing we're going to test is the gyro reset. So we're going to move the aileron stick to the top right corner. We're going to turn the orientation LEDs off by moving it to the bottom right and turn them back on again off on. So that's a pretty good indication that uh, we've got things set up correctly. So now I'm going to put my switches to the standard operating which would be middle for mix switch there. Uh, beginner mode should be fine for there but I'll put this into sport mode. My throttle hold is off. And initialize. Can hold that throttle. And turn them off. So we seem to be uh, in good shape here. Beginner mode. Intermediate mode. And advanced mode on my F mode switch. Okay, so I'm going to put this back on intermediate mode and I'm going to put my mix switch on mix 2 which is altitude hold and the LEDs should start flashing rapidly and they definitely do so to deactivate that turn the switch back to center and move your throttle and we're back in standard mode Okay, so right now we're in the uh, sport mode, F mode 1. Right now I'm going to put the mix switch up to the zero position, which should put it into acro mode. And there we go, three pulses. One, two, three. That's acro mode, putting back to mix 1. We'll cancel the acro mode. Now I'm back in standard sport mode. And if I put it down to mix two, I am in altitude hold mode. Two, uh, two position, then back to the one. And then when you move your throttle, it will automatically take it out of um, the altitude hold mode. So everything seems to be working. Calibration and we should be ready to fly. fly. Okay, I've got the uh, six inch props on and I've got the lemon uh, receiver mounted. Now, when you're done with all your binding and, uh, and learning and all that, make sure you take your bind plug out. And so what I ended up doing, I put some uh, shrink tube around it, the receiver, but I didn't do the shrink. I didn't want that goo on there, and I just wrapped it in some red tape. And I kind of put it in at a bit of a, of a L shape like that, just to get everything out of the way as best as I can. And that seems to work okay. It's uh, I can put the camera tray on without any issue and there seems to be room for everything. I don't currently have the satellite hooked up. I'm going to do a little test flying and maybe some range testing uh, with just the receiver for now and see how that works. So now we're going to test how easily it binds on startup. And double check everything working. So I have the transmitter booted up. One thing I've noticed is the um, throttle hold only um, puts it back into like an idle speed mode. It doesn't kill the motors completely, but that's fine. That'll, that'll uh, settle her down. So I have, I'll just show you here. So my throttle hold, and it is uh, the flight modes are on my F mode switch. That's beginner showing 
that the F, F mode switch is highlighted. That's not where I normally want to fly, so my normal position would be F mode 1, and the expert or advanced mode would be right there. Now I have my mix switch in the middle, which is standard flight mode. If I start it up with the mix in the zero, it'll warn me by highlighting it that I need to be in the one position. Uh, when I go into the zero position, that is, of course, the uh, acro mode. And uh, when I go into mix two, that is the altitude hold mode. And you can actually turn it on to two and back to one. It'll stay in altitude hold mode until you move your throttle. Um, the other switch I have here is I have my aileron switch. When I turn that on, it moves my rudder over to the aileron. And um, what that will allow me to do is to uh, hover in altitude hold mode and turn the rudder and do uh, panoramic scans around uh, with the camera um, without losing my altitude, which is uh, very difficult to do with the rudder stick because the slightest kick of throttle uh, cancels it. So that's the other switch that I have set up there. Okay, so I have uh, aux 4 knob controlling the elevator between 30% and 100%. The aux 5 knob controls the ailerons between 30% and 100% and of course you can set them individually if you want 75% on the aileron and 60% on the elevator you can of course do that. I do that instead of uh, dual rates so that you can pick and choose what you want. And then the next number is my uh, flight timer and the permanent timer. And over to the right underneath the icon there, I just have a 0 to 100% display, which is uh, good and another, another tool you can use to check the status of your battery. If you're normally hovering at, say, 50%, and then all of a sudden you're up around 75%, you know that uh, you might want to stop and check the voltage on your battery and that can vary from battery to battery, just another tool that you can use. And uh, that's how she works. So now, okay, so we're going to plug in the battery, and we are already uh, bound. And we're in intermediate mode. And we're going to uh, LEDs off, on. Reset the uh, the gyro. Um, in interesting, uh, it doesn't uh, beep when you do that. Um, I'm going to start up the. Echo mode, out, and I'm going to go into altitude hold and back, and it's going to stay there until I give it just a little bit of a little bit of throttle, and you can see how the emergency stop on the blades. If you're not careful, at least you won't get hurt. So to reset that, uh, the red light's flashing indicating that the blades shut down because um, they hit something. And you can just like that. Okay, now we're still in um, altitude hold mode, so Hold, just give it a brief little stick of throttle to uh, disengage the altitude hold mode. Careful. And 
top right there. A couple of things to be aware of. There's very little clearance between uh, that plug and the canopy. So you have to be careful when putting that canopy on. And of course, making sure that it's not interfering or rubbing on the side where the cable goes through because that obviously can cause some problems as well. Other than that, it's ready to fly. Okay, I have the canopy back on and you can definitely notice the the uh, receiver there. Might have been better to make it in black, but I thought the front of the might help me with orientation, so I put red tape around it. And you can see that there's no interference from any of the um, of the canopy anywhere around from the wiring. So you don't want that pressing on the wiring uh, causing you a problem later.